also from me a very warm welcome to the 10th print day. Welcome to the second day of our anniversary event. As Robert just said, some had a short night because they visited the evening event. The others had a short night because they traveled here. And this is why we will be a little interactive today uh, with some movement for all of us. Whoever has watched uh, a lecture by me, hands up. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> what usually happens typically? Yes, the movie quiz. I have to disappoint you today. No movie quiz. No, and no horse to grum either. But I have brought something along. A sweet little phrasing piglet. I don't know who has actually watched a doppelpass. Whenever there's a phrase issue, then you have to pay five euros, such as before the matches, uh, after the matches, before the match. And this is what we're going to do today. But you don't have to pay five euros or anything else. If you spot a phrase uh, on one of those charge saying, well, I've heard this a thousand times, then you simply get up Due to the size of the theatre, don't shout, but say phrase. And then, in exchange, you will get one of these limited edition print day mugs. They're all numbered. They're 200 pieces in all. I don't know how many are left. Uh, I think we've got 12. And you will get a wonderful mug. Just shout out loud, phrase, and you'll get the mug. There is one or there are two little uh, exemptions from this rule. Not considered a phrase is uh, my reference and explanations of uh, uh, the uh, presentations today. So the titles will be a compressed version. So these titles are, of course, excluded from this uh, phrasing game. And the second term is print with one or two eyes. So this is also excluded. Welcome back. After 18 months of a purely digital communication, and you can see some of the charts don't even have a text. So, uh, so much for phrases. I do not know what, what, what you felt like. I heard the feedback yesterday. At last, um, human communication meeting in person after 18 months of home office teleworking, empty meeting rooms and uh, dozens of Teams meetings. I think this has uh, done a lot to us and COVID is definitely also a digitalization accelerator and you won't turn this back. We won't turn this back. Many things will simply be reassessed. What have we learned after 18 months of digitalization? I think the most important thing is that you simply have to want it. Uh, if as a software company with decentralized development teams, we've always been uh, working remotely. So it was not so much of a change process, but for many of our customers that we've watched, where it seemed to be impossible to communicate remotely or that uh, customers accept teleworking. So many things that uh, con were considered uh, impossible for many years became possible overnight. <laughs> they simply have to want it or they were forced to. We had a customer who and we noticed this in passing, the IT for seven or eight years refused to use Teams or introduce the system. And after three weeks, it became possible all of a sudden. I don't know what you've experienced. Uh, you simply have to want things to happen. Of course, uh, there is a lot more digital communication today. Many events were called off, many trade fairs were cancelled, many customers also said, will we do a print catalogue or will we suspend the catalogue? We have to do more digital stuff. 
this is uh, my personal experience now and I shared it with some people yesterday and I received a similar feedback, especially in B2B communication. There is uh, far more unsolicited uh, uh, acquisition when you look at this, how the marketing automation tries to uh, win me over as a customer. This cannot always work. So there is more digital unsolicited uh, acquisition and canvassing. And in many companies and in many processes, of course, uh, digital weak uh, points became visible and evident at our end too. W because we wanted to or had to, we did away with these weak points. Uh, points but in the processes we detected many weak points also with customers and um, very often uh, digital coordination processes had not been established uh, pdfs were sent around and they were printed out and all of a sudden everybody sat in their home office and it no longer worked that way so also in publishing processes, the digital weak points became very evident. And in many cases, they had to be removed quickly. And this is also one of the conclusions. There is more preparedness now for digital, all things digital, and for digital processes. And we welcome this. What also happened is since you couldn't attend trade fairs, uh, you required less print, and there is a reassessment uh, of uh, print and offline touch points these days. Also, at our company, do we still do the print day or will we go completely digital? So all of this, um, what we've uh, learned over decades as a communication strategy is currently being reassessed. This is a statement by a customer. Uh, this is not a joke. This is an original quote by a customer. And... Um, after uh, uh, being consulted by us, they decided uh, to do even more print and be more differentiated. But this is a question that pops up. And what does this uh, question tell us? Uh, well, one thing is that uh, this question is fully motivated by silo thinking. There is the online silo, very often also a social media silo. Then there is the offline silo. And these silos are fighting, struggling for budgets. This is very obvious. And at many customers we know, they have not established in organizational terms that there is one uh, re person responsible across all channels for the customer journey. So the person who who is responsible uh, for actually uh, orchestrating communication across all uh, channels. So such a statement is very typical when you have a strong silo thinking. And, of course, print and the functionality of print and the necessity of uh, sprint touch points is, of course, questioned by such statements. And... It's about costs, of course, and we have a lecture by Mrs. Meloschik, and she will talk about how uh, costs can be saved in multi-channel publishing. Again, back to digitalization. Question. H have you understood what I said about the phrase piglet? Who, who shouted out loud? Nina? This is, of course, a phrase. Of course, it's about digitalization. And now, the next phrase uh, 
will be presented, but not in the charged change management. And I think uh, many can follow this statement. Change management is the prerequisite for good digital processes or the classic if you digitalize a shitty process, then you have a shitty digital process. Phrase. Okay, get him a mug. <laughs> I am uh, pretty confident that the following lectures that deal with this change process will not be packed with phrases. First, uh, uh, is manchmal menschelt es by um, uh, Thomas Bokowski and Michael Giesen. I thought whether I could should issue a warning. Sometimes it's too human. This is the uh, heading. Uh, during the pandemic, I visited customers three times. And one time I uh, met with uh, Thomas Bokowski of Bofrost and there were ne uh, contract negotiations. And at, we reached one point of the negotiations uh, where we found we, that we couldn't continue for formal reasons and technical reasons. And we thought, what shall we do? And then Mr. Borkowski said, well, then, Mr. Huber, I will tell you something about Bofrost. Um, wouldn't be bad to know our company. And he actually presented a superb presentation. I left the negotiations about the contract and I thought, well, I have to become a Bofrost customer. This was the, the warning I wanted to issue. So fantastic presentation and why Bofrost products are so cool. Another cool lecture on the change process, but from a different perspective, is uh, innovation is a matter of the heart. Very often innovation is seen as a technical paradigm. Everything so technical and technological, but very often innovation only works out well uh, if it is backed up by people and uh, by its energy and passion. And this is why I'm really happy. David, are you here? Yes, at the very back of the room. This is, uh, I'm looking forward to Hemel Ulrich's uh, presentation. Innovation is a matter of the heart. And Dietmar Rietsch of PIMCO, the magical triangle of digitalization. Unfortunately, Dietmar cannot participate in person because in, on Friday, I think he had a COVID case in this company and this is why he will actually present remotely. It will be streamed. So three lectures dealing with the change process and how to manage the change process in digitalization. Let us abolish print catalogs. We have to invest in SEO, which brings us to the question, will we need print in future? And if so, uh, in which format? And I'm really happy to have three award winners that uh, we could enlist three award winners for presenting about this topic. On the one hand, Mr. Wozniak of Vago. Mr. Wozniak will report uh, how publishing is uh, approached by Vago, a strongly digitalized process. Then Timo Zimmermann, yesterday's uh, uh, award winner for uh, digital publishing, will tell us uh, how uh, from a digital uh, approach, print can be generated, what it then looks like, and Jürgen Meyer of Hoffmann Werkzeuge will report uh, everything remains the same, but all different. And I'm really happy that uh, Hoffmann um, will actually share its uh, thoughts about the development of print catalogs and other media. So three award winners who will talk about whether there will be print in future and if yes, in which format. Product experience, customer experience, 
Um, this will definitely play a pivotal role in these three lectures. And on product experience, we also have two talks. And that one on how this will change the storytelling and how completely different uh, pictures are painted and uh, how this will affect the print touchpoints. And Stefan Albers will give us some ideas revolving around the product experiences for digitalization. What do you need? for a product experience. In all of these uh, lectures, this is almost an uh, automatic statement. We need a good product experience, a good customer experience. You need content. And this is why you have to focus on content. This is the typical line of argumentation. Nevertheless, content is of fundamental importance. And we have two um, presentations, one by Thorsten Hamann about uh, uh, failing for beginners and for advanced uh, subjects. And then by our platinum uh, uh, sponsor, Selim, how you can uh, generate content efficiently with Selim. And it's more about emotional content and rather than um, naked product data. This sentence um, follows the mantra of digitalization. Everything you can digitalize will be digitalized. Yes, money will be digitalized. Health will be digitalized. digitalized. Our communication will be digitalized. Everything will be digitalized. Uh, would you agree or disagree if I said digital communication will become more individualized, more personalized, context related, and will be more or less on demand. Who uh, can uh, agree with this statement? Hands, show of hands, please. Thank you. Nobody will dare to actually uh, uh, raise the hands if uh, I say who disagrees, because uh, for the courageous one, I, and this is exactly what this statement is meant to say. You have to really put some thought to what you want to digitalize. digitalize. If our communication is uh, on demand, context related, more individual and personalized, then we're no longer capable of generating every content manually, such as text, for instance. Because I can write the text, I can do one for online, one for print, and I can do it for one or two target groups and uh, maybe in two or three country languages. But uh, with eight or ten texts, I'm basically done for a specific product. And as you rightly said, the decision can be, well, this is enough for me. This is one version. The other version, the other version is that you say we want to publish more on demand. In other words, we probably want to have a text uh, within an autumn context or maybe a text um, in the context of an application. If I have a product for 10 applications and on the website I know that the user is looking or was looking for one application, then I have two uh, deliver a text that is uh, specifically designed for this application. And this is all context I cannot foresee. And in such cases in future, you will have to uh, automate what we're currently doing manually. And this is the automatic text generation. The same applies to images and other types of content. And this is, I think, something that 
sector will play an even more prominent role in future because I'm not aware of any company saying we have our content completely updated, everything is perfectly managed and maintained and corrected. Well, if this is the happiest moment in this company, the next day the statement will be wrong already because you have a new product and a new or a new version. So the pure mass of content generation, and this is already the case today, will overtax organizations. It'll, it's getting more and more. And this is why I am convinced that the automated content generation will obtain a completely different new meaning. And this is something that uh, we will have to uh, uh, give more thought to. On the topic of automation, there are also some uh, talks, also award winners, innovation and how with a small innovation you can reach quite a lot. Uh, this is the print site and this is how layout synchronization can be done um, at uh, across various language versions by Porsche and S by by SQLI. A talk on uh, AI. Uh, what's already possible today and what will be possible in future. I can only report from my personal experience. It is always astonishing to see what is possible, feasible already today. And this is why this will be a super presentation. Last but not least, When you think of famous Ulrich's uh, presentation, then I really like this uh, title. The connection between automation with a very emotional word. And this is a, a, a love uh, to detail, attention to detail. Every detail must be automated in order to uh, ensure the best possible catalog experience. I very much look forward to this presentation by Equus and my view. All of these topics, digitalization, what uh, does publishing mean, what will the future of print look like, we will summarize all of this in a panel discussion that will take place here on this stage facilitated by um, Tomias Sobel of Personage, uh, Mr. Meyer of Hoffmann Werkzeug will be represented, Mr. Wozniak of Vago and Stefan Born of Personate. And I think I'm also on the panel. So all of these topics seen from a completely different perspective in an interactive and hopefully very lively format of a panel discussion. I don't know what the friendly gentlemen recommend in their presentations, but when we reflect on whether we will need print in future, there are many answers to this question. And all answers are not fully clear yet, but let me briefly introduce what moves us and uh, what we're absolutely confident about, what will happen and which requirements uh, we will be facing. Print communication must be made measurable in retail when you have big data, customer data. These uh, happy companies know and they can prove statistically that print in a digital communication works and can be extremely successful. But in B2B communication, we have to create a mindset and uh, tackle the question of how a successful print catalog can be. And we have to make it measurable. This is something that keeps us on our toes. And uh, um, I alluded to it before that uh, digital communication will become more individualized, personalized and more context, context driven. If you say uh, that uh, print uh, should survive, uh, then um, the the print communication should also um, do the same or deliver the same across all print touch points. So 
print touch points must be available on demand and personalized. And I think there the uh, Wozniak um, presentation uh, from Vago is a very good example. And digital means also means agile and uh, implementing something quickly and test it quickly and this is why I think that um, many things when we look at the change process of uh, print touch points one elementary question will be how fast can we put this into practice uh, looking at uh, this is being reported, but I, I'll say it nevertheless. If you look at how long a PIM project takes, and I'm not speaking of the technical implementation, I'm also thinking of the organizational uh, introduction, how all of the data is updated. We have a process duration of two, th two three, four years in total such a PIM system. The technical introduction is easy, but uh, until it has been really put into practice in organizational time, terms, it takes longer. There are various perspectives. The technical uh, look is we'll do it in a year or half a year, but until this is really um, uh, accepted by the organization, it takes uh, substantially longer. If we reinvent and rethink print, we can no longer afford such cycles. Customers say, well, let's try it. Just like the person who said, let us abolish catalogs. We have to invest more in SEO. The, th the underlying thinking is a digital one. Let's say we'll try it, we'll measure it and uh, measure the success. And then we will either continue, learn from it, or stick to the old things. And this in future will mean that you simply want to try out print touch points quickly to learn a lesson and then actually draw the consequences from these lessons learned. And I already uh, said that uh, print will become part of the digital com communication. Print will continue to exist and print will change but it's part of the digital realm and the mindset has to change uh, uh, from the uh, um, digital mindset to a digital uh, from the print mindset to the digital mindset what does this mean for us as the uh, producer of the print suite we're of course thinking about this and uh, are reflecting on this change process of uh, uh, print the process. I'm speaking of uh, digital print products such as PDF files, not only of, of, of paper-based products. So what will the future of the print suite look like? For those of you who are not so familiar with the print suite, the print suite is modular on the one hand, and our rendering uh, technology uh, can be InDesign text. This can be the Illustrator uh, desktop, the InDesign server, and we have the PDF renderer, which also works uh, without the uh, inline server uh, to produce a document. Uh, this is uh, the print uh, Comet family integrated into the print suite family. The old partners know this. This also works without the print suite and the print suite uh, can be run uh, in the, both in, uh, in the prem and in the private cloud. And there are two lectures about this from our team doing all of the rendering technology. Leo Quenzel, Paul Seidel and Christian Sorge. And of course um, you've probably heard this already today. We officially present uh, a pre-release of the Print Suite 4.2 with many, many new features. And this will be done by uh, Dr. Siegert. Dr. Siegert. Mrs. Siegert will explain to you what the number on the mark is all about. <laughs> Of course, we ask ourselves, like all software manufacturers, uh, the be-all and end-all for all uh, 
software manufacturers is what about the cloud the private cloud is an installation on uh, uh, the existing architecture and we also asked ourselves this question and we came up with a number of uh, answers uh, first answer is that uh, uh, two, two and a half years ago, we said no. We decided against the private cloud and we said we will actually establish uh, the print suite on a cloud architecture. We said no, we won't do this because uh, this does not bring an innovation um, with the exception of bringing down hosting costs. And this is why, and that's uh, the second big debut um, I, I did not actually uh, spell out a version number. Today is the official debut of our print cloud. This is a microservice-based real cloud application that uh, provides uh, s uh, certain services. Not the spectrum of the print suite, but uh, uh, quick services that are quick to introduce. We also have customers for this already and we're very happy uh, in the Akaneo environment we already offer a data sheet service uh, with four days of configuration based on standard templates so this is a quick implementation time four days we've already enlisted some customers there very successful and uh, the way it is uh, with innovations, we've used the commit with the PDF renderer and existing technology was uh, optimated and we've used the same technology and made it uh, part of the print cloud. If this is of interest to you and uh, what else is planned over the next few years, then I warmly recommend Digma Feltz and my presentation on the print roadmap. We're speaking about the roadmap and how we do, how we innovate and how we will handle this in future. It's a brief overview of the print suite roadmap and a bigger overview of the print cloud roadmap. So what you're in for over the next few years. And for those uh, um, technology nerds, there is a cloud team presentation. Parts of the cloud team will talk about technology and what is feasible today. And there you can actually look under the hood, so to speak. There is the print cloud. Um, it took us two years to develop without talking to customers. We simply said, let's do it. And then we will introduce the first service. And now it's uh, time to actually pull up the curtain.